Welcome to another episode here on Buffer Overthought. Today we're diving into a topic that might sound a little technical and maybe even a bit boring at first, but trust me, it's one of the most critical foundations of cybersecurity operating system processes. Think of processes as the lifeblood of your computer. They keep everything running smoothly, from your browser to your favorite game. But here's the twist. The same processes that power your computer can also be hijacked by attackers. That's right. What seems boring at first is actually the front line in the fight against malware. In this video, we're going to demystify processes, show you how attackers exploit them, and share tips to defend your system. So let's dive in because understanding this boring stuff might just be the key to protecting your machine. A process isn't just a file sitting on your hard drive. It's a living, breathing entity in your system, running in memory, using CPU resources and managing system connections. Think of it like a living cell. It has its own memory space, uses CPU time, and interacts with other parts of the system. Understanding processes is like understanding the basic building blocks of your computer's DNA. If a process is like a single cell, then threads are the organelles inside it, smaller units that work together to keep the cell alive. Processes are isolated from each other, providing security, but that isolation can add overhead. Threads, on the other hand, share memory within their parent process, making communication faster, but sometimes less secure. Attackers love exploiting that shared memory for their own gain. Windows runs a bunch of key system processes that are essential for your computer. For example, Winninit.exe, the first process that boots up the system. LSAS.exe handles user logins and password checks. Explorer.exe gives you your desktop and taskbar. Svechos.exe runs multiple services in one place. Attackers target these because they're always running and often trusted. Defenders keep an eye on them because a single compromise here can give an attacker the keys to the kingdom. On Linux, things look a bit different, but the principles are the same. You've got INIT or systemd, the first process that starts everything else. SSHD handles secure remote access. Cron runs scheduled tasks, which can be abused for persistence. Bash, the command line interface where everything happens. These are all potential entry points and defenders watch them like hawks. Not all processes are equal. Some run as root or system, meaning they can do anything. Others run as admin or standard user with more limited rights. Attackers are always looking to elevate a process's privileges, turning a small foothold into full control. Defenders use the principle of least privilege, only give processes the permissions they really need. Think of an access token as a digital ID card for a process. It tells the operating system what a process can and can't do, like a hall pass in school. Attackers try to steal or forge tokens to sneak past security controls and act like legitimate system processes. Understanding tokens is crucial for defending against privilege escalation. Process injection is like a digital parasite. Malware can inject its code into a legitimate process, hiding behind its good reputation. That's why defenders look for suspicious behavior inside trusted processes, because the process might not be as innocent as it seems. DLL injection is a classic trick on Windows. Attackers create a malicious DLL and trick a legitimate process into loading it. Once that happens, the attacker's code runs inside the trusted process, often completely undetected. On Linux, attackers love the trace system call. Originally designed for debugging, it lets them inspect, modify, and control other processes. With trace, they can read memory, change registers, and even hijack execution. Defenders use security modules like SLinux to limit per trace and stop attackers in their tracks. Process hollowing is like a digital body snatcher. An attacker starts a legitimate process, then guts it and replaces its code with malware. From the outside, it looks like a normal program, but inside, it's pure evil. Threat injection is more surgical. 
Instead of replacing the whole process, the attacker just creates a new thread inside an existing one. This lets malware run alongside legitimate code, making it harder to detect. Process suspension is like freezing time for a program. Attackers use it to pause a security process, make their changes, and then resume it, hoping no one notices. Defenders monitor for suspicious suspensions, because legit processes shouldn't just freeze out of nowhere. Address space layout randomization, ASLR, is like shuffling the furniture in your house every time you walk in. It makes it harder for attackers to know where to land their payloads. Without ASLR, attackers can hit the same spot every time. With it, they have to guess, and that's often enough to stop them. So why do hackers care so much about processes? Because that's where the power is. By hijacking legitimate processes, they inherit trust, privileges, and the perfect disguise. For defenders, learning to spot these manipulations is key to stopping modern attacks. Understanding processes means understanding the game. Thanks for watching. If you learned something new today, give us a like and subscribe for more cybersecurity content. And let us know in the comments. Have you ever seen a process go rogue on your system? Stay curious, stay safe, and keep hacking smart.